Thank you so much. Thank you for the introduction. And uh, thank you, everyone, for taking the time to come and be with us. We are absolutely thrilled to have you with us again. It has been too long. But we are going to make sure that your week finishes on a high. Um, this will be the highlight of your week if we get it right. And we're going to talk about a topic which we are absolutely fascinated by that is the core of what we do. And since we started the company more than 10 years ago, we've been focused on bringing visibility to our customers to enable them to solve major business challenges and issues. And we've titled this particular session, Active Visibility for Next Generation Business Infrastructure, because that's our vision for what we do for our customers. We enable them to adopt and leverage technology to progress their business in a meaningful way. And we're going to explain what we mean by active visibility and why that's different from visibility in general in the course of the conversation today. So we have a stellar team lined up. I'm going to introduce them to you as I wrap up my opening remarks. And uh, I wanted to say, first of all, um, it's a pleasure to be part of the Gigamon family. I've been here just over a year. Peter Finter, Chief Marketing Officer. Um, my Twitter handle is PRFinter, PRFinter. Um, and uh, look forward to engaging with you all as we go through. So we wanted to spend just about 15 minutes to introduce the company. Um, so the obligatory disclaimer, because we will be talking about some forward-looking <coughs> aspects of our business today. But let me immediately move to something that, uh, that you were exposed to as you came into our brand new headquarters here in Santa Clara, um, which is our company timeline. The reality is we've been investing in this space for over 10 years. 10 years of R&D and innovation is what you're going to be exposed to today. And what we're going to be talking about is where we're going from here. The platform that we've built has been really around pioneering a concept, which is that providing better access to real-time traffic information makes a meaningful difference from the perspective of managing, monitoring, securing, and analyzing business information to drive better outcomes, business insights, ability to make different business decisions. Our R&D portfolio and our patent portfolio that supports that, we have patented areas as diverse as flow mapping, which is at the heart of our technology, through clustering and cluster management in the context of a visibility fabric, through to role-based access control, through to statistical sampling. We have a significant number of patents already issued and more um, identified. So that's a huge part of what we're about. And the connection point is really transformation and disruptive <coughs> transformation in the context of our customers' technology environments. But when we say next, business, next generation business infrastructure, what are we actually talking about? We're talking about everything from virtualization to adoption of the cloud, to mobility, to next generation software defined networks. And all of the above are creating challenges and issues that visibility is designed to address and to solve. So let's talk about that a little bit more. Um, for those of you who didn't have time to review the timeline, this is your opportunity. And what you'll notice is that over the last 10 years, there have been a succession of firsts. First to market with 10 gig visibility solutions. First to market with 100 gig visibility solutions. First to market with SDN visibility solutions. So we've got a lot of experience that we're going to hopefully bring to the table today to engage in conversation about how that is impacting on what we see happening in the marketplace as a whole. So we're very proud to have you here in our new headquarters. And without further ado, let's talk a little bit about the evolution of this space. The market that we serve today was almost unknown or unrecognized just a few years ago. In fact, arguably, it wasn't until our IPO in June of last year that the analyst community really stepped up and took notice. And this is the first report that's been published by a significant analyst firm, 451 Research Group. It just came out a couple of months ago. And as from their perspective, they see 14 different vendors currently active in this market. About a billion dollar business today, growing, most importantly, at about 24% CAGR, according to them, over the next five years. So this is becoming a substantial market category in itself. And yet what's interesting about it is that it is not something that was recognized as a self-standing part of the technology universe prior to ultimately Gigamon putting it into being. So what's, what's that really about? Why does this gap exist? And what is it that Gigamon is doing about that? The industry at large is responding to a set of needs. So essentially, the simplest way to explain it, in our view, is that the volume and type of information flowing over communication networks is exploding. It's increasing at an exponential rate. And yet, the ability to be able to understand, interpret, analyze, and secure that information is under more pressure than ever before. In fact, more specifically, the percentage of the data that is relevant and consumable by the applications and systems that are designed to interpret it and interrogate it is reducing over time. 
more specific information required for more specific purposes. Security and vulnerability management needs a different view of the data from customer experience management. Traditional network performance monitoring is different from what the application performance monitoring tools require. And as we see this transformation in the underlying network infrastructure, it's creating pressure on all of these areas. And that is the gap that needs to be solved for. This is not about tap and aggregation, collecting information and serving more of it up to the tools that are connected to it. The tools cannot cope with the volume of information that's being presented to it. What this requires is intelligence. Intelligence that permits the correlation of information at the flow level. Intelligence that allows the pre-processing of the traffic frames, the packets themselves, before they arrive at the tools in order to optimize the performance of those uh, connected systems. That's what we're arguing is the case and why there's a differential between what you're seeing today from what you probably have been exposed to over the last little while. And I wanted to spend just a moment talking about data sources because the reality is when we first engage in a conversation with someone that's not familiar with the solutions that we offer, they typically start from the point of saying there is already data available to be analyzed. Isn't that sufficient? Well, actually, different data is required for different purposes. So polling-based data sources, interrogating specific devices is very useful if you want to know about the status of the device. Uh, protocols like SNMP have been around for donkey's years, and they are valid, but they're not sufficient. They address some questions, they don't address others. And maybe I'll just take this moment to say what we recognize is that there are, inside of our customers' organizations, groups that are very familiar with the issues that we're talking about now, who have been working on them for years, the networking teams in particular, have a great deal of appreciation of some of these concerns and issues. But we're now talking to other teams who desperately want access to better information. Let's take the security teams, not so familiar with networking technology, not so interested in networking technology, but yet highly dependent upon it, starting to get into this environment. Let's take the virtualization teams. We just came back from VMworld a couple of weeks ago. Huge amount of interest in what we're doing in this space. We're going to spend time on that today. But many of those virtualization teams don't think in terms of the information that is available from the network. They think in terms of what's available from the compute resources, the storage environment that they're very familiar with. So it's a journey for everyone. And as we move down this path, we move from poll data to flow-based data, NetFlow in particular. We created quite a stir in the industry when we introduced a NetFlow generation application earlier this year. Why? Because it was not expected that we would deliver a solution that was superior to what was available from the native products that support or create that information flow. By creating it at the fabric layer, we're able to bring a richer, more reliable, sustainable set of information to bear. That came as a bit of a surprise. We've been overwhelmed with demand for that solution and many of our competitors have started to look at what they can do to fill that need from their perspective. But frankly, the most valuable information available in the context of this uh, challenge that we're talking about is real-time frame from the network. Every Ethernet frame contains valuable information if it can be interpreted and understood to address a much wider and richer set of questions and issues than is available by any other source. And that's why the traffic visibility space is expanding as fast as it is. So let's talk a little bit about products. I know you guys are very technology focused. I want to get to the technology as quickly as possible. So very straightforwardly, here's a network. Here's a set of devices that need access to information. What's the best way of connecting those two things together? Well, we're going to argue the best way is to build a visibility fabric, a fabric which is scalable, extensible, and has pervasive reach. The concept of tap all is becoming a, a term that we're seeing more and more. Reference architectures now for data centers, cloud solutions, and beyond are starting to recognize the need to be able to access information at every point within that environment. That's what we call pervasive reach, both the physical domain and the virtual domain. Why is there a difference between those two? There is no difference from the perspective of getting access to relevant information, and most importantly, being able to process that information intelligently in a consistent way, which is why we've developed a complete platform and a raft of applications, some of which we're going to demonstrate live today, which are available uniformly Regardless of the platform, regardless of the device that's required to make access that information, all of those capabilities are available at the most appropriate point in the infrastructure. So consistency of delivery, 
high performance, reliability, and security of information is what leads uh, us to be able to support the most demanding customers today. If we look at the architecture itself, it's really a four layer model, and it will be familiar to you as you've been looking at SDN architectures of one form or another, because it essentially starts from a services layer. The services layer comprises of hardware and software that's designed to provide that access to the information flows and that pre-processing at the packet layer. So if you think about it as a packet layer and a flow layer, this is essentially packet processing. Very intelligent capabilities, things like adaptive packet filtering, the ability to inspect a packet anywhere within the frame, layer two through layer seven, very advanced capabilities. With a management layer on top of that, because we're talking about not devices, not nodes, not boxes, but fabrics. And therefore, the ability to manage the fabric and treat it as a single virtual entity is a critical component of a total solution. A layering alongside of that, an orchestration layer, the importance to be able to interact with dynamically connected systems and devices. The engagement, for example, that we've had with VMware leverages our APIs to be able to provide some unique functionality, which we're going to talk about today. And of course, there's much more potential beyond that. And then what we call our applications layer. And the applications layer is essentially where we're delivering that flow-based capability that is above the level of individual packets. So inspecting packets and processing packets is valuable, but what's more valuable is the ability to correlate packets from multiple sources from different points in the network. We're going to talk about SDN architectures today, and in particular, the need to be able to correlate underlay and overlay networks and be able to understand what's happening in that dynamic. The only way that you can do that is with advanced correlation capabilities like this, delivered on what we call our GigaSmart platform. You'll hear us reference that today. So a very familiar architecture, and it's an architecture that does not exist in isolation. In fact, one of the things that has been at the hallmark and the, at the center of what we've been about is our ability to partner successfully with other technology providers to create complete solutions. And this ecosystem, as we describe it, has these two components. There's the underlying network infrastructure because we are completely agnostic. We work with any network, any tool vendor, which is why our customers perceive that they get future proofing by working with a Gigamon solution. They don't know what they're going to be implementing next year because it hasn't been designed and invented yet. The rate of innovation, actually particularly in the top part of this uh, diagram around the tools environment, is huge. We are um, constantly being approached by startups here in the Valley and from around the world looking to connect into our environment because they need access to the kind of information. And so we see this as an expanding universe. Over 80 ecosystem partners today, all the names that you know and are familiar with are on this chart and others that are not on the chart but are in process. And that's both at the top and bottom. So this is a highly dynamic, evolving environment. It hinges on the ability to partner successfully and that's been at the center of what we've been about. And I realize I'm taking more time than I should on this introduction, but I don't want to leave this little introductory piece without talking about something that we're very excited about, which is our customer journey. Something that people ask us, since we have nearly 1,500 customers across service provider, federal, enterprise environments, two-thirds of Fortune 100, a third of the Fortune 1,000 are Gigamon customers today. We've got broad experience of customer environments. And what we have determined is that actually no customer moves linearly from left to right, or very few in this particular chart. But this is intended to show you the typical evolution of a customer. Oftentimes, the starting point for implementation of a, a solution like this is around economics. It's around managing the cost of the infrastructure and being able to adopt next generation technologies with more confidence and at lower cost. That's the first piece. But what often drives the next stage of evolution is a recognition that that becomes a shared resource. Within a typical IT organization, there could be five or six very different user groups who could take advantage of this type of information, and yet oftentimes it's one or two that see the need initially and drive the initial implementation. What we're finding is that having established that, then that our customers want to leverage that across multiple groups. I mentioned earlier on patents in the area of role-based access control, multi-tenancy, that's what we're talking about here. And providing a platform of visibility goes far beyond solving a point product or point solution or point pain point, if you will, in the customer environment. So moving from a single focus to a multi-service platform, and particularly with a focus around this security team. I mentioned earlier on, 
We talk to three different groups typically within an IT organization who have very different expectations. The networking team, the security team, and the virtualization team. Often it's the networking team that is seeing the demands from their colleagues and is trying to figure out how to solve that. That's how the security teams are typically getting engaged. But they are driving more and more focus around this area. You can't secure what you can't see, as we like to say. And the third area that's now becoming very pertinent is this area of business agility. The ability to be able to provide a dynamic, real-time, responsive environment where the visibility infrastructure is not static, simply flowing information based on certain pre-configured conditions, but is now responding in real time to changes in the external environment. Simplest example, vMotion in the VMware uh, context. As VMs move dynamically across the environment, whether locally or remotely, the importance of having the monitoring policies dynamically reconfigured in real time to mirror the movement of VMs becomes extremely important. That's a simple example, but think about where that can go. Detect, react, and respond. Changing conditions, illustrating potential hotspots or problems in the environment. Applications that are suddenly not performing as expected. Customer experience issues. How can we have this environment dynamically reflecting and moving information to where it needs to be um, in real time? That's the promise, and that's the journey that we're taking our customers on and starting to engage deeply with them. So we want to share as much of that as we can with you today. We're going to give you opportunity to ask as many questions as you want to ask and to get as much information as you can. And so we've set up the agenda a little bit like this. And I wanted to use this as a bridge to just introduce the rest of my team here who are going to be presenting for the balance of our session today. So Ananda Rajagopal is going to be our next speaker. Um, he is our Vice President of Product Line Management and we're going to give you an overview of our portfolio and start to delve a little bit deeper into the technology. Mirrored to that, we will be then demonstrating some of our core capabilities around flow mapping and traffic intelligence. Um, and Noam, sitting right here, is going to be demonstrating that to you. And Amanda is going to come back and talk a little bit about SDN and specifically the implications of SDN, not just from the point of view of the production network and how that's evolving, but how the application of SDN principles and technologies can be applied to the monitoring environment itself. So we're going to get into that debate. That's a, a very good issue for us to discuss. And so we're going to touch on that. And then we're going to take a look at some depth with Sesh Sayani, our senior product manager, in the area of virtualization. What's actually possible? Where is it going? What's happening from a VMware point of view? We'll talk about Cisco's ACI environment and others. And then we're going to wrap it up with a session where you can give us some feedback on what you hear today.